Mariano, que le ponga el micrófono. Pues. Daniel, no, Mariano. Daniel, chura y micrófono. Bueno, con esta marca y Cayarina en desquicio, en Chatura Roxonchis, un gato de los clientes. Apunto con un poco de Roxonchis, por más tapo, más junto, por más que de más grandes, por más cumple con Ampa, por más que va a poner su papá y con él. Entonces, ya, yo no soy mismo. Apuntamos <tose> Apu paro karen, nayata apu akanako. Yipinya apu kunama, kumas tukuri kunis, papay kunis. Apu kakoro. Mas tonanka, ke yanka sa ikus papar kumbut sa chung. Apu kapal alipanipi. Bueno, que era un tomate, un pagamento, un pato mamá, un canoa, gracias. Okay, from, from the Potato Park, uh, one of the elders, Maximo, was just doing a very traditional opening cer ceremony with sacred coca leaves, and he called out to all the sacred mountains around us and to the Mother Earth to um, bless this meeting and, and exchange that we're about to start. Thank you. Ah, shere yo ili kwa ya kuomba ile ni kama blessings ya waze na wanatumia kuna majani naituwa coca leaves ama majani ya coca na wanaitumia wanaitoa ni kama kuomba baraka kutoka kwa wale miungu eh es así como el parche de la papa, ¿no? Por ejemplo, de acuerdo al este, Paikuna a esto. Para el impacto, el rabo y nuestra manta, para ir a la chay manta, compañero Aniceto. Introducción al parque de la papa, chay manta, para ir a la chay manta. 
Is the are the rabbi then going to do their brief uh, introduction, or would you like us to? Um, maybe you could start, Tammy. That would be great. Thank you. Is that okay, Leila? They're going to do the um, opening remarks and introduction to the location and history. Okay, that's fine. Uh, watu wa Peru watanza na kutoa utangulizi ya eneo lao na historia ya mahali pao na Potato Park. Yes. So Anisa is going to begin with a brief introduction. Bueno. Bueno, compañeros, uh, muy buenos días. Good, mor good morning from our side, John, uh, and friends. In the Parque de la Papa, y todos los participantes de los diferentes We're here in the Potato Park Papa, from all the different communities of the Potato Park. Intercambio de, de experiencia, de cultura, and we welcome you to this exchange of culture and knowledge. Para dar una introducción al Parque de la Papa, Potato Park is by six communities, several communities working together, based in our traditional knowledge, with an area of 9,200 hectares, population of 7,700. Uh, Tommy, sorry, can they translate now into um, into the local language Swahili? Can we just pause yes. a minute? Thank you. Yes. Uh, walikuwa na toa ile historia la eneo lao ya kuwa vile tunavyoona pale sehemu zao ni za milimani na wanafuata sana mila na tamaduni za kwao na hizo milima wanazi enzi sana kama sehemu moja ya tamaduni zao vile sisi tunaenzi makaya yetu e, na zina umuhimu sana na tutaka viendelea kuwasikiza watatuelezea ni kivipi wanatangamana mna mila tamaduni na pia rasilimali zao za kiasili El Parque de la Papa es un patrimonio biocultural indígena eh, donde está la cultura, Park is a biocultural heritage danza, territory. And we celebrate our culture, our clothing, our food, our wild plants and animals. And all of that makes up the Potato Park. Potato Park has also been recognized as nationally as an agrobiodiversity zone. The great diversity of potatoes that we have here has united the communities that form the potato. Park. Thank you. Let's translate that. Thank you. Wanaendelea kuelezea kuhusu Potato Park na kwa lugha yao wanaita Paku de la Papa yani Potato Park kwa lugha yao na wanasema ya kuwa wanaienzi sana uh, pamoja na hizo rasilimali zenye ziko hapo ndani hapo ndani pia ina inaweka zile aina tofauti ya viazi za kitamaduni ziko pale na wanazihifadhi Na pia hapo hapo inaifadhi bayanwai aina nyingi sana ya mimea, vyakula, vya kitamaduni. Na imekuwa ni eneo la kivutio hata katika taifa la Peru kwa ajili ya kuhifadhi mila na tamaduni zao kama potato park. Mm. Mm. Para terminar, hay una introducción así... Finish. This was just a really brief introduction. We still have lots of time to continue talking about our knowledge, our ancestral knowledge. We'll continue this exchange, the exchange of the experiences between our communities. So, hiyo okay. anasema ya kuwa ilikuwa ni utangulizi tu ama introduction ya Potato Park lakini vile tunavyoendelea tutaendelea kubadilishana mawazo na pia zile taratibu za kule na pia za Kirabai Asanteni So the Potato Park is in the Andes mountains of Peru and um, now it would be great to hear from the Rabai community 
uh, to have some opening remarks from you and a brief introduction to where you are in your history and culture. Anasema Christina ya kuwa potato park iko katika uh, Andes Mountain nchi ya Peru na wakati huo ni fursa yetu kuwaelezea uh, kama jamii ya Kirabai eneo hili linapatikana wapi ni rasilimali zipi ziko hapa na pia historia ya eneo hili na jamii ya Kirabai uh, Daniel will uh, take us uh, through that uh, session welcome Daniel Kwanza na wasanii mwambie hawa jambo huko Peru. So da- Daniel is saying uh, hi to everyone from uh, Peru and the rest of us. Aende eh, mimi ni Mrabai na hapa niko na jamii ya Warabai. Eh, pia sisi tunatarajia kupata mengi kutoka Peru kwa sababu sio rabai tumeanguka mahali kwa sababu tumeolewa na madini mengi yametupiga mafuta. Weka. Ah, uh, uh, my name is uh, Daniel. I come from the Rabai community and with me here are members of uh, the Rabai community and we are more than eager to learn from you and more so uh learn the secret behind your strong uh, cultural attachment because as a community we feel like we are losing some of our culture to modernization thank you could you just wait for the translation uh, into the spanish please just a sec thank you Puedes traducir al español, dice lo que se habló. Está apagado tu micro. Ya habéis traducido. You already translated? I was doing it, yes, I'm Oh, perfect. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay. Please, please continue, Daniel. Okay. Nikemamu ndomo. Eni watu wa tudivu hasa kwanza tunapenda mila na tamaduni zetu. Shida letu ni kwamba Peru dini yao ni moja. Na wao wana umoja kuliko sisi warabai hapa tumepiga mafungu na madhehebu. Ah uh, Daniel says that uh, as a community uh they are very united but but are threatened by modern uh, religion and it feels like in peru perhaps they have a unifying uh, religion that is not such a threat to their cultural uh, affiliation and so he's uh, emphasizing that uh, they are eager to learn from the peruvian uh, approach and uh, maybe Omari uh, can talk more about the history of the Rabai community. Español también. Ellos también están muy unidos como ustedes, pero amenazados por religión. Dicen que hay religiones que a la vez a veces se unen, pero los ambos pueden ser. Ah, Boroni. So you can continue. Thank you. Uh, Omari will uh, shed a bit more on the history of the Rabai community. Is uh, one of the Kaya elders. Uh, Voroni Christina. Ah, uh, Voroni Christina and the rest. Eh, what Zina na hiwa Omar Bemunga. Do Zina rangu na na husa history yamrava ibratu arizio. Eh, kumajina na hiwa Omar Mze Bemunga. Kwa hivyo historia wa Rabai kwanza tuna makaya ambayo ndio mila zetu ambazo huwa tunafanyia huko makaya. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Munga, a Makaya elder 
and uh, we have in uh, Rabai we have the Kaya uh, sacred forest which uh, forms like the basis or uh, foundation for our cultural heritage hasa ikiwa ni umetokea kiangaza ambacho eh, kinatatiza jamii ya Rabai sisi ambao tu waze wakaya huwa tunaenda na kufanya tambiko sehemu hizo za makaya we perform a number of rituals uh, in the kaya forest to avert disasters that may face the community at any given point katika jamii ya warabai tuna makaya ambayo ni sehemu ine tuna kaya mzimuvya kaya bomu fimboni na kaya mzimwiru na kaya mzizima we have four kaya forests within the Rabai community that's kaya bomu kaya muzimuvia kaya muzimwiru and kaya mzizima hizo sehemu zote kila kaya lina shughuli zake hasa sehemu za hizo makaya kama ni wakati wa kuomba imefika wakati wa kilimo huwa tunaenda kaya muzimwiru ndio tuna uweze ku kuombea mvua inyeshe kwa hali ya kupata mazao mazuri each of the kayas have their cultural significance for instance when you want to pray for a bounty harvest we conduct prayers within kaya muzimwiru kaya bom fimboni huwa ikiwa ni wakati wa upanzi e, tunai, tunaenda ombea mbegu zetu ili tukipanda tukipanda hizo mbegu ziwe zita kuwa vizuri na tuweze kupata mavuno mazuri huwa tunaenda kaya bomu fimboni in kaya bomu fimboni we normally uh, pray for the seeds before they are planted if we want to get a good uh, harvest we make sure that we conduct rituals uh, using the seeds prior to their planting and then we are able to get a good harvest E vile vile hiyo e, tukienda mkaya mzizima iwa kama tumevuna e, kile chakula chetu huwa tunaenda topoa chakula chetu kaya mzizima ndio sehemu ambayo tunaombea hiyo chakula tukila tuwe tutapata afya nzuri magonjwa yote yaweze kuondoka in a kaya mzizima that's where we offer thanksgiving uh, prayers after a good uh, harvest and uh, we also pray for the uh, harvest at that time that it may sustain our health and that uh, we may uh, be healthy after consuming the food okay eh tukiachana na upande huo wa maombi tukija sehemu za jamii ya mrabai hasa tuko na vyakula ambavyo huwa tunazingatia sana hivyo ndivyo vyakula vyetu ambavyo vinatupatia nguvu kama jora eh, kishombo hata mama Christina umeweza kukionja ulipokuwa uko huku sehemu ya Kenya we also have a very strong attachment to our traditional foods and agrobiodiversity which is found within the Kaya landscape and one of our special foods that we are really culturally attached to is the chishombo and uh, Christina had a chance to sample that meal and it's such a delicacy amongst the Rabai community. Pia tunazo mboga ambazo ni za kienyeji kama munavu, mchunga, zote hizo ni mboga ambazo huwa tuko tumezeweka kipawa mbele kwa jamii ya sisi warabai kwa ili hatukupendelea hizi mboga ambazo e, hazitupatii madini mazuri we prioritize conservation of uh, our uh, traditional uh, vegetables such as uh, mchunga manavu because of their rich uh, nutrition and also for adaptation and resilience to climate change kwa hivyo tumependelea sana E, sisi jamii ya warabai tuwe pamoja na tuweze kuukuza hizi mboga zetu za kienyeji ili tuweze kupata afya bora na kizazi kizuri. Asanteni. 
we are very happy as a community to continue uh, preserving our cultural heritage, including our traditional foods for future generations. Thank you. Andy, we, we've lost your um, visual. Um, we can't see you at the moment. But are you listening to us still? Yeah, now we can oh. see you. Thank you. Um, para añadir, eh, los compañeros en Rabai están en Kenia, en eh, la zona de la costa de África, y es una zona eh, de baja altura, o sea, cerca del mar, no montañas, pero tiene también problemas de sequía y entonces eh, hay algunas cosas parecidas con el cambio climático. Y bueno, para explicar un poquito, quería decir eso. Gracias. Um, okay, I was just explaining that Rabai is in the coast and also has drought problems that the, sometimes they get in the potato park. Um, I think we can move to the session on cultural reaffirmation now. Um, so shall we hear from the potato park first? Tammy, is that okay? We're, yeah, we're ready. Uh, Aniceto is going to begin this section on cultural information. Bueno, ahora eh, yo les voy a hablar acerca de nuestra convivencia. I'm going to talk to you now about how we live together, our culture, a little bit more about our indigenous communities, especially within the Potato Park. Our biocultural heritage is based in the IU system. There are three IUs. One is the realm of the wild, and another is the sacred elements, and the third is the realm of people. And these are called uh, hang on a minute. Should we ask Leila if she wants to translate? Yes. Un segundito. Uh, ana, anazungumazia mambo ya mila na tamaduni za kwao ni nini muongozo wao na anazungumzia ailo. Nadhani kuna baadhi tumesikia kuhusu ailo. Yaani inamaanisha usawa kati ya watu, kati ya Mambo yenye iko kule, ile tunaita wild ama ile iko kwa misitu, na pia miungu na zile sehemu kakati usawa wa haya mambo yote. Back to you, Tami. Entonces, eh, eh, nosotros, nuestra convivencia aquí en las comunidades eh, so the way we live together in our indigenous communities. It's important how people relate to nature, the wild animals, the sacred mountains. And these three communities have to live together in reciprocity. And we also recognize duality. Even our sacred mountains represent men and women. And they show us how to live with this kind of duality. In the realm of the wild, we recognize many biological indicators. Uh, Tommy, would you mind pausing now just for a quick yes. translation? Thank you. Alikuwa naendelea kueleza vile wanaeka usawa kama jamii ya kule potato park na usawa huu umehakikisha kuwa wanaishi kwa pamoja na kwa njia ya kukaa pamoja 
na zile sehemu takatifu wanahifadhi rasilimali za kiasili na hii imewawezesha kuhifadhi maeneo yao kule Peru na mepeana mfano wa milima hizo zenye tunaona hapo nyuma wameza kuzihifadhi sana sana kupitia hii mfumo wa Ailu yenye mehakikisha ya kuwa kuna usawa kati ya watu rasilimali za kiasili na sehemu takatifu kama milima Back to you Tami Como como funcionan estos FS13 tres comunidades o tres ayllos para so how do these three different communities live no, together los, cómo funciona por ejemplo la comunidad de silvestres ahí están los animales silvestres in the están, realm of the wild is all the wild animals cordilleras o los cerros hay mountains también en los plantas silvestres también están ahí en los tres pisos ecológicos en están three different ecological zones y como nosotros eh, Eh, de nuestros ancestros, nuestros abuelos, nos han enseñado. Our ancestors, our grandparents taught us to live with this, the wild and the sacred. Para nosotros, o que a nosotros nos indican eh, con el aullido, con la floración. We can listen to signs from nature, for example, the howl of the fox or sounds of birds. Soy Manta, hay con tu jardín. Amekuwa akifafanua zaidi kuhusu vile wameweza kukaa kwa pamoja na wanyama wa mstuni, mimea za mashambani, mimea za mstuni na pamoja na watu kwa njia ya kutangamana na anaendelea tu kusisitiza vile huo mfumo wa ailu imewasaidia kuweza kukaa kwa usawa na kwa pamoja na kwa kuhifadhi zile rasilimali tofauti tofauti katika ile landscape yao wakiangalia rasilimali za kitamaduni ama za kiasili pamoja na zile mimea zenye ziko pale wanyama wa mstuni rasilimali kama mito kama milima na mengineyo back to you tami entonces eh, y también eh, Dentro de la comunidad de personas está ahí la organización mismo, el parque de la Papa. We can think about how the potato cart is organized and we have an inter-community agreement with agreement about how we work together. We also do a lot of collective work, we collaborate within community governance. We also have domesticated plants and animals within the realm of humans. nasema ya kuwa uh, katika mfumo wao wa potato park wako na zile kuseme ni kama makubaliano kati ya jamii tofauti zenye zinaishi kule ndio hizo wanaita intercommunity agreement ya kuwa wanafikiana watakuwa wana wanajisimamia kwa mfumo fulani na yale makubaliano ni kama yanakuwa ni kama mwongozo katika zile shughuli zote zenye wanafanya pale katika potato park na pia wako na serikali za kijamii katika area yetu pengine itakuwa ni kama zile kamati za vijijini na hii serikali ina nguvu ya kuweza kusimamia maeneo tofauti tofauti katika hiyo sehemu na wameweza kufanikiwa kupitia mfumo huo these three communities work all together uh, very closely and we, they need to work closely together to have uh, a good life or harmony in so uh ya jamii kuja pamoja kwa ajili ya kuboresha usimamizi wa maeneo yao ndiye anasisitiza naona wengi manalala sijui kama soda <laughs> na makate umekuwa ni panadol bueno muchas gracias y hay uh... uh, thank you very much my colleague ricardine has been adding a few words to that um, anasema santeni sana mwenzake ataendelea na sehemu ifuatayo
So hello, in the name of the Chamber Park. And we have all my colleagues here. Yeah, I want to add a little bit to what Annie Setron has said. Uh, just a little bit about how these three ayus of humans, the wild and sacred, um, work together. Uh, sorry, the sound system is, uh, the, the sound is not so clear from your end, Tammy and Tim. Okay, just one second. Um, can you can you hear me now? Does it sound clear or it's still muffled? Hello? Yes, it's uh, clear from uh, your end, but when she speaks, uh, we don't get anything or uh, probably we'll listen to you more. Oh, okay, let's try some yeah. more. Yeah. Okay. Seguimos. She wants to speak about how these three IUs of humans, animals, uh, or humans, wild and sacred, live together and how they work together. We have to protect all of the wild. Uh, the realm of the wild, the plants, the animals, because they give us food. We also work in reciprocity in that way. Okay, uh, let me translate, uh, Tami. Okay, uh, anasema ya kuwa ngependa kuzungumazia ile usawa wa ailu usawa kati ya binadamu uh, sehemu za kiasili na pia zile mifugo na mimea zile ambazo zimeweza kupandwa mashambani na anasema ya kuwa kuweka usawa huu ina umuhimu sana katika kuhakikisha ya kuwa kuna chakula cha kutosha katika jamii hiyo ya potato park okay proceed we are always thinking about Mother Earth. Um, so we have to live in harmony with Mother Earth. We especially think about things like water. As farmers, we need to live in harmony with the wild and water, Mother Earth, to be able to have food. And thanks to Mother Earth, we are here, we have food, we're well, we're, we're healthy, but also we must care for Mother Earth. She just had one last point, is also with the wild plants and animals. Like if we're sick, we still rely on the wild. We have wild plants that heal us. So we, we must live together. Okay. There's a lot of reciprocity within the human realm as well. If someone gets married, you give them some of your potatoes, and, and in another event, they're going to give you some of their seeds. Also, between men and women, there is reciprocity. We support each other. Uh, can, can we translate? So weddings, funerals, we always go with our food and share. We work together. We share our food. Yeah. 
and okay, so, uh, okay, let's work together in agriculture. It's collaborative work. It's sharing of food. There's a lot of reciprocity. Yeah. We're all. A big I'm so family. sorry, but okay. Okay, okay. that's all. She, she's going to stop Thank there. You. Thank you. Okay. Uh, nitafanya translation. Vile nile kwa nimetanguliza kusema anasisitiza sana umuhimu wa kulinda rasilimali za kiasili na ametaja sana mambo ya mother earth, umuhimu wa kulinda uh, sehemu zetu za kiasili na rasilimali zetu za kiasili ama mazingira yetu ili uweze kutusaidia. Ametaja mambo ya maji, mazingira yetu inatupa maji, inatupa chakula inatupa pia madawa wakati tunapogonjeka na hizo ni baadhi ya zile manufaa wameweza kupata kutoka eneo lao kule Potato Park alafu wamesisitiza sana mambo ya kubadilishana ndio ile anasema reciprocity ya kuwa binadamu anabadilishana wenyewe kwa wenyewe kama mtu ana mbegu hii mwingine ana mbegu hiyo nyingine wanaweza kubadilishana na pia wanabadilishana kati ya binadamu na rasilimali za kiasili. Ya kuwa binadamu anafaidika ama ananufaika kutokana na zile rasilimali za kiasili. Na kama jamii wameweza kusaidika sana kutokana na mambo ya kusaidiana ama kubadilishana uh, zile vitu zenye pengine mwingine hana na mwingine ako nazo. Na wamesema wanafanya kasi pamoja kila wakati na hata wakiwa na chakula wanasaidiana. It's not something like that. Did you finish now the the cultural reaffirmation presentation Tammy? Yeah, we're ready to hear from the rabbi. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so um Leila and friends, um shall we give them a big clap? to show our appreciation. Thank you. Um, would you like to um, go straight to present the rabbi cultural and spiritual values? Or would you like to ask some questions first? It's up to you uh, what you'd like to do. Uh, Christina nauliza je tungependa tuulize maswali kadhaa ama tuweze kuelezea umetuelezea kuhusu mila na tamaduni zao sasa ni wakati wetu kuelezea kuhusu mila na tamaduni za Kirabai je tuna maswali ya kuuliza kwanza ama mnataka muende moja kwa moja muelezee mila na tamaduni uh, so they say they would want to ask a few questions first We're, we're ready for some questions. Uh, Daniel, para que respondas. Mimi, naitwa Tsui kutoka Rabai. hapa kwetu mfumuko wa dini mbalimbali unaathiri mila na, na tamaduni zetu. Siju kwao pia kama mambo haya yamefika na yameathiri vipi mila zao. Uh, my, my name is Sui from Rabai and I have a question to the Potato Park uh, team. Uh, in Rabai our cultural uh, affiliation has largely been uh, affected by modern religion. Uh, is that the same uh, in your case? And uh, how have you been able to overcome that challenge as a community? Did you get that, Tammy? Uh, should we allow them to respond? Uh, Maybe one more question, then they can respond. Okay. Kwamajina uh, Naito, Bana Michael Pico. Mackenzie kutoka village ya Miuni kama mwenyekiti. Tukiangalia ndugu zetu wa Peru tumeona nchi yao ikiwa na milima mingi sana. Nimestajabu ya kwamba hiyo sehemu pia bado wanajitosheleza kwa chakula na ni mbinu gani ambazo wanatumia katika milima ile ambayo tunaona 
ni mashini gani wanatumia swali so, mm-hmm. my name is michael pico from uh, rabai and my question is i can see there are a lot of uh, hills in uh, the potato park and to me it appears like uh, a dry area from the look so how have you been able to attain food security what is the secret behind assure, ensuring that you get uh, enough food from the dry hills that i see okay, mariana is going to answer the question about religion oh Mariano Atajipo. La pregunta es cómo afecta la religión en el And to answer the question about how religion might be affecting us here in the potato park. We have uh, Adventists and other many other religions here. They also they study the Bible. But a little different than the Catholic religion, for example. I follow the Catholic religion, but it doesn't uh, prevent me from practicing my culture. And uh, we, we believe there's just one God anyway, so it shouldn't be division among people. It should be union among people. Some of the religions are preventing people from practicing the, the rituals and traditions that we have. In the Catholic religion, they don't mind if we do those things. Some other ones try to prevent them. Yeah, thank you. Anasema ya kuwa jambo la kwanza anaitwa Mariano na angependa kujibu swali la Bwana Tsui kuhusu vile dini imeathiri ime mila na tamaduni zao na ametaja jambo la kwanza ya kuwa na mfahamu chemuko amewahi kutana na yeye alafu baada ya hapo akasema ndio kuna dini aina tofauti tofauti katika hilo eneo na ile dini kubwa zaidi katika hilo eneo ni ya Catholic na yeye aswa ni mkatoliki lakini kuwa mkatoliki haijamzuia kufuata mila na tamaduni zake. Kwa hivyo wanasema ya kuwa uh, religion mila na tamaduni nafai ilete umoja na wala si kugawa watu kwa misingi ya, ya dini. Kwa hivyo amesisitiza ya kuwa licha ya kuwa kuna dini tofauti tofauti na yeye ni mkatolik na wengine pale pia wengi ni wakatolik aija wazoea ku kufuata mila na, na tamaduni zao kwa hivyo wanaishi kwa uh, kushiriki dini na pia mila na, na tamaduni zao okay. uh, back to you Tammy and Tim and now Ricardina is going to answer the other question about the dry hills behind us and and how that relates to agriculture Uh, and you commented that you see behind us very dry hills we are in a period of harvest and finishing the period of harvest and it starts to get very cold and we get frost at night and we're processing our potatoes into chuño and morai it's freeze dried with the cold and the sun and then we're storing our foods right now as well and the hot sun and the cold frosty nights right now helps us to preserve our potatoes and um so that we can store them for a very long time and that's really important for food security 
We still use a very old traditional agricultural calendar from the Incas. Right now, the hills are dry, but in rainy season, uh, from September up to uh, about uh, April or May, everything is green and flowering, so it looks very different. And as uh, farmers, we have to have faith, we have to trust. And we have to have, uh, we have to trust that it will rain when it's supposed to rain and it will be sunny when it's supposed to be sunny. And it helps us to raise our animals and cultivate our crops. And we live in harmony with this cycle of agriculture and trusting in Mother Earth. Uh, anaitua, anai, ames, yule mama mbaya meongea anaitua Rikadina na anasema ya kuwa ngependa kujibu ilo swali kuhusu ni vipi wameza kujitosheleza kichakula na anasema ya kuwa kwa wakati huu vile tunaona hizo milima ndi wametoka kuvuna sahi eh, hapo hapo kwa milima hapo ndiyo viazi zinapandwa Sasa wamevuna ndiyo tunaona iko hivyo na wakati kama sahi kuna baridi mbaya sana. Haswa wakati wa usiku. Mpaka inatoa ile nyevu nyevu. E, lakini hiyo wanaifraia manake vile wamevuna. Hiyo baridi sana inawasaidia kuhifadhi zile viazi kwa muda mrefu. Ili weze kwa tosheleza ni kama mwaka nenda mwaka rudi. Alafu pale pale anasema ukienda katika hilo eneo kati ya September na May utapata sura tofauti utakuwa naona kila mahali imekuwa green manake wakati huo mimea zimenawiri kwa kwa mashamba. Sasa ile kwa kuendeleza zile maombi zao, kuendeleza mila na tamaduni wameza kuhifadhi hiyo mahali na hata wa, wa wanatumai ya kuwa ikifika wakati wa mvua wainanyesha bila shida kwa hivyo ameza kuishi kwa tuseme usawa na madanecha ama mazingira yao na imeweza kuendelea kuwazalishia chakula cha kutosha eh tutajukua swali ya Muhammad alafu madam hapa hivi tu hizi uh, ine zote lakini tu swali tusiende story swali straight away so we'll take a few more questions because there are a couple of uh, hands up from uh, the community. Aya, kwa majina naitwa Muhammad Kadilo. Sisi eh, ukulima wetu wa eh, ukulima wa asili, wa vyakula asili umetatizwa sana na eh, serikali. Yaani serikali yetu uh, kulingana na hu eh, tutasema wameweza kutubadilishia yani wanatusistiza kwamba tuweze ku, kulima ukulima wa kisasa sasa sijui kama serikali hiyo yenu huko kuna mfumo kama huo kwamba lazima ubadilishe baada kupanda e, vyakula asilia upande vya kisasa kama vile duma na vyakula vingine my name is uh, Mohamed Kadilo from uh, Rabai and uh, my question is uh, in our case our farming uh, systems are largely uh, negatively impacted on by the fact that uh, there's a lot of emphasis by the government on uh, conventional uh, crops and uh, not traditional crops. So in your case in uh, Potato Park, does your government support your local crop varieties or what is the scenario? We take another question so that they can answer them together kwa majina naitwa Catherine Ngome kidogo kidogo nafanana na kama lile lakini langu nilikuwa nauliza hapo mnatuelimisha habari ya hiyo viazi mnavyopanda mpaka mnahifadhi mwasaidiana viwatosheleze throughout ina maana hamuna crops zingine mpandazo ama hamna vyakula vingine tofauti mnakula tu viazi kila wakati kila siku my name is uh, Catherine Ngome, and my question is uh, closely related to Kadilo's. 
and I'm asking, you talked about uh, growing potatoes in the potato park. Does it mean that you eat potatoes on a daily basis and there is no other food crop that you grow? Jina langu ni Kabu Kadilo kutoka jamii ya Warabai na swali langu ni kuuliza kwamba hivyo potatoes ambazo mnakuza mnauza nchi za nje ama ni za matumizi ya nyumbani peke yake My name is uh, Kavu Kadilo from Rabai community and my question is uh, the potatoes that you grow do you consume them locally or do you sell them in other countries outside the Peru The last question then uh, you can respond Mimi kwa makina ni George Kadilo nilikuwa nauliza tukiangalia mko kamba mumevaa uniform za kiasilia je hapo mko katika sehemu ya ya kikaya kama vile huku kwetu mahali kwa kiasilia ama mko mahali wa mashambani alafu nyingine ni kwamba huku kwetu tuna misitu yetu na uharibifu sana hasa watu wanakata misitu yetu ambayo tena sababisha hata maporomoko ya udongo hata wakati mwingine mimea yetu haikui vizuri kwa sababu ya magonjwa ambayo yanasababishwa je huko kwenu kuna changamoto kama hizo My name is uh, George Kadilo and uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, the first one is that I can see you all dressed in a uh, cultural uh, clothing. So are you in a cultural site or are you on your farms? And uh, is that how you dress ordinarily every other day? And then uh, the second uh, question in our area we've witnessed a lot of uh, destruction in uh, our kaya forests are you experiencing the same and how have you been able to overcome th th those kind of challenges if so back to you tammy and tim uh tammy did you get those uh questions yeah, I've got them here. Probably we're going to combine our answer quite a few things about potatoes, for example, and agriculture in general. So Lino's going to talk a bit about that. Great. O imakuna wan de repente tu pachin ki chai papa wan de repente. Mi nombre es Lino. Primero yo saludo a la compañera Cristina. Greetings to Cristina and Chimuco. I'm Lino. And hello from the Potato Park. To tell you a little bit about the products in the Potato Park. We do preserve native potato varieties, but not just potato. We have to balance our diet with other products, other crops. And we have three ecological zones. In the highest part, the middle and the lower, they grow different things. In the lower part, we have quinoa and parwe. And this is, helps us balance our diet. We also do exchange. We can exchange with the, the uh, Chalakwi Corn Park, for example. And we can exchange our products for things that grow in their valley. In terms of the government programs for agriculture, 
They try to sometimes give us some different kinds of potatoes that they think might grow easier. But a lot of those come with, uh, they need chemicals. And, they, and we don't like those ones. We don't grow those. We grow organically. We use uh, organic fertilizers, animal manure. Yeah, if we use chemicals, that's going to destroy our fields. Yeah, maybe it'll grow really good for a year, maybe two, but a few years later, the soil won't be productive anymore. So we don't accept those um, products. Modern, the products of modern agriculture, we prefer our own system. Uh, about uh, uh, so ni vyakula ina tofauti tofauti ni vile wanasisitiza viazi kwa sababu viazi ndio chakula ina inajulikana sana katika hiyo nchi ya kuwa ilitoka huko lakini pia wanapanda na pia kubadilishana ina tofauti tofauti ya mimea mboga kuna ile mahindi ile wanaita kona ile ya yelo eh Alafu kwa mambo ya serikali na vile ina sisitiza uh, mimea za kisasa anasema ya kuwa wameweza kupata support kwa ajili ya kuhifadhi mbegu za kiasili lakini kuna wakati wanaletewa zile mbegu za kisasa na serikali na hizo mbegu zinatumia kemikali nyingi sana zinadhuru udongo mazingira utatumia kwa miaka miwili lakini baada ya hapo imearibu sana mazingira kwa hivyo mara nyingi wanakataa hizo mbegu na wanapanda zile zao za kiasili wakitumia mbinu za kiasili wanatumia manyiwa ya ngombe ya shambani na zile mbinu za kuhifadhi mazingira okay. so now uh, our colleague Carmen is going to talk about the traditional clothing that you've seen Hello to everyone. Well, it's here in Peru and in Kenya. Carmen and I come from the community of Amaru in the Potato Park. So you asked about our clothing, and I can tell you we have different kinds of clothing that we use. Uh, we have some very special clothing we'll use for weddings or other special events. <laughs> we make these clothes ourselves. And we have other clothes that we wear when we're working in the fields and getting dirty. We, use, we don't use the special clothes every day. Um, and although our grandparents uh, made all of these clothes themselves, some people now, some younger people are buying some of the clothes as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
na wakati wanaenda shambani wa wanavaa nguo tofauti zile zenye zinaweza zikachafoka na udongo wa shambani lakini anasema wanaenzi sana hizo nguo za kitamaduni walifundishwa na nyanya zao na wameweza kujitengenezea wenyewe hadi sahi na hata kufikia sahi kuna vijana ambao hununua hizi nguo kutoka kwao na nadhani muda yote tumeenda hapa utapata kila mara wamevalia hivi utafikiria ni uniform wanapenda sana mila na tamaduni zao uh, she also added that uh, although this clothing might make us look like we are indigenous it's not just our clothing it's something you your culture is something you really have to feel in your heart and feel inside and it's reflected in the way you act every day as well not just in our clothing anaongeza kusema ya kuwa si vazi tu ya kuwa wanavaa hivyo ili waonekane ya kuwa wao ni watu wa kitamaduni lakini wanapovaa hizo nguo inaingia mpaka kwa roho yao wanajihisi ya kuwa wanajivunia mila na na tamaduni zao na hata vile wanavyo jibeba lazima iashirie ile mila na na tamaduni si vazi tu lakini inaashiria ile kupenda na kudhamini mila na tamaduni yao amesema tamaduni iko kwa roho sumesikia kwa roho lakini sio tu kwa vazi peke yake lazima itoke kwa kwa roho sorry okay, i was just was... emphasizing on the point that Tammy just mentioned that the culture must come from the heart it should be deeply <laughs> enraged in the heart so i was emphasizing that to the community here thank you uh yes, Tammy, there, there was one final question just about uh, you're having problems with destruction of the forest so um danielle wanted to make a couple comments just about the environment here in general the kinds of threats they face eh, sobre cambio o eh, quiero hablar de eh, bueno eh, cuando usted ve año 80 70 estos años eh, la paisaje eh, la vivienda eh, era eh, más porque yo antes no calentaba el cambio climático era regular y pasando los tiempos los días pero más más eh, el cambio climático el calor está aumentando no y también las plantas más está desarrollando y por más en los años 80 70 las plantas de eh, poca crecían no the part of the papa is sobre there's a problem with the sound from your end oh sorry <laughs> can you hear me now yes i can can you hear us yes yes please uh, go ahead is it, is it okay now yeah yes can. yes it's fine tammy please okay. could you translate um to english thank you okay so um did did you miss some just now then because i we so didn't he, hear he's just talking about climate change um it's getting warmer here and some of the plants maybe weeds or things like that are growing a lot bigger than they used to with the the increased heat but it's changing the landscape the climate change <laughs> mabadiliko ya hali ya anga inawaathiri pia na imeweza kusababisha kuna baadhi ya zile weeds zilikuwa ama kwekwe zimeweza kuwa kwa wingi na kubwa zaidi na pia ile landscape ile eneo lao linabadilishwa na mabadiliko ya hali ya anga ila naturalisa liga tambio 
the we have changes in water as well. It doesn't rain at the same time as it used to. Some years we're getting really torrential rain. Some years we're getting drought, um, frost or hail. Sometimes at different times of year. So the impacts of climate change are pretty strong here. But some of that affects, of course, our food security as well, ability to produce food. Uh, you have, uh, this. Okay. Go ahead, Leila. We'll continue in a minute. Sorry. Uh, kama tukiangalia mambo ya mvua mifumo ya mvua imebadilika si vile ilikuwa hapo mbeleni wakati mwingine inanyesha kidogo wakati mwingine mvua inachelewa kuja na hii pia imeweza kuchangia katika hali ya kutojitosheleza kichakula kwa hivyo ndio hata sisi tumeweza kukabiliana na hatari za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga We're trying to react to adapt to climate change. We still use our native plants or crops. We're identifying potato varieties that are resistant to these conditions. To, yeah, we're, we're trying to adapt as much as possible to climate change. I want to talk about this uh, year. Can, can, uh, can Leila translate um, a minute, please? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Licha ya kuwa kuna athari za mabadiliko ya hali ya anga wanajaribu kutafuta mbinu ya kukabiliana na athari hizo na mojawapo ya hizo mbinu ni kuwa na wameza kutafuta zile aina za viazi zenye zinaweza kustahimili ukame na wanazipanda kwa wingi zaidi kwa hivyo licha ya kuwa kuna athari hizo wanatafuta mbinu za kukabiliana na kuweza ku yeah, and he just wanted to give this year as an example to tell a bit about what happened this year. Here in the potato park, some, well, some other places had lots of rain, but here, and here we had a very heavy snowfall, really, a really bad one. But we're also having a lot of heat. And this has really affected the harvest this year. Thank you. Katika eneo lao kumekuwa na snow kwa wingi sana. Alafu baada ya kuwa kumekuwa na snow pia kumekuwa na uh, joto jingi sana. Na hii imeweza kuathiri mimea na imeweza kuathiri ukulima wao. Lakini wanajaribu kutafuta zile mbinu za kukabiliana na athari hizo wakizingatia mimea ambazo zina stahimili uh, is that the end of the answers, Tammy? Uh, yeah, that's all for oh, now. We'd, okay. we'd love to hear from Diana. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I think um, just to mention um, to Rabai, I think from the answer, you don't have the problem of forest degradation in the potato park, do you? You don't have forests that are being degraded by people because they need to sell the forest wood to, to buy food. So that one of the questions yeah. was about that, but I think the answer is no, you don't have that. Uh, just to clarify briefly. Christina Nasema, ya kuwa nafafanua tu kuna yule aliuliza kama zile changamoto za waribifu wa makaya. 
wanapatiana nayo kule na nasema la kwa sababu kule hawana misitu na wana ile shida ya tuseme njama masukumo yenye nasukuma watu kufanya uharibifu kama sehemu hii yetu so sorry could we just uh, allow them to answer the question chimuku just give one second please yeah, they they do have some problem just with there's fewer there's fewer forests high high in the mountains but they've been cutting them for building and the communities of the potato park are organizing themselves to try to protect those forests and plant uh, plant more trees as well uh, na ndio zimekuwa zikikatwa lakini kwa ajili ya kufanya ujenzi nyumbani lakini jamii wameweza kujipanga kwa ajili ya kuzuia huo uharibifu na pia wanaendeleza upanzi wa miti katika sehemu hizo ili kujaribu kurekebisha zile sehemu ambazo zimeharibiwa Thank you so much. Um I think we'll move on um as Chimuku I think was saying we uh, need to hear from Rabai now. Um, so the Potato Park would love to hear about your traditional worldviews and concepts. We heard about the Ailu, and um, they would like to know if you have something similar, like maybe you want to talk about the Muzini and your other values of reciprocity, um, your your worldviews and values from the rabai michigenda culture and spiritual values and maybe also something about what are the challenges and um opportunities for cultural reaffirmation thank you uh, uh, christina nasema ya kuwa ni wakati wetu sasa kama jamii ya kirabai kuweza kuelezea wale wenzetu kuhusu zile tuseme mtazamo wetu wa kiasili mila desturi zetu anasema tumesikia wakisisitizia mambo yao ya ailu je huku rabai kuna mfumo wetu na ametukumbusha kuwa pengine tuwaeleze kuhusu mudzini kuna yale tulikuwa mlikuwa mnasema mambo ya umwenga soyo soyo pengine wangependa kusikia zaidi kutoka kwenu So ni nani ataanza kwa sababu eh atutaki kuchagua mtu yule angetaka kuzungumzia atasimama azungumzie so, uh, We'll have uh, random contributions from uh, members and uh, they'll be able to raise their hands at will and uh, contribute Ataanza okay kwa majina anaitwa Thomas Chipi mkaji wa Jimba hapa Rabai na maswali yangu au ningetaka kueleza ya kwamba sisi wa Rabai ukiwa atakuwa na family ama atakuwa wa bibi mpaka wazazi wa yule bibi na wazazi wangu naitaka kuoa waelewane kuhusu habari ya mahari ndio toane na yule bibi na nikishamua yule bibi hawezi tembea na mwanamke hawezi zini na mwanamume mwingine na akizini na mwanamume mwingine ni anipe malu ni makosa fulani ambayo anaitwa malu huku kwetu nyinyi kule kwenu mko na mambo ya mahari na mko na mambo ya mtu akitembea na bibi ya mtu kuna makosa fulani kama malu huku rabai tunavyofanya asanteni uh, my name is thomas uh, chipi and uh, i'd uh, like to make my contribution about the rabai community uh, cultural uh, provision for traditional uh, marriages in rabai community marriage is negotiated between uh, the bride and the groom's uh, family and it's uh, binding and uh, if uh, any of the married couples have an extra marital affair 
then uh, there is a cultural compensation or fine that one pays so I'm asking, does that apply to your case or how is it, how is the scenario in the potato park? Um, I think we'll have a quick, quick answer to that, but then we, we would love to hear about your Muzini and your other values, because that's what this session is about. Thank you. I anasema tota jibu ala fo ni muhimu tujibu kulingana na maswali ile tunaulizwa tunaulizwa mambo ya mudzini ya harusi tutaongea baadaye tafadhali sasa tuweze kuelezea mudzini mambo ya soyo soyo umwenga na yale mengine asante so i think christina the uh, the question will be answered at question and answer sec, uh, time so we proceed and give another community an opportunity a member of the committee an opportunity to talk about their values the, their world view uh, yeah so my friend here uh, can we hear from the kaya elders because they are the experts uh, um mimi ni kabu kadilo na naweza kusema mila na desturi za kirabai kwa wakati huu zimekeukwa na zile dini za kisasa ambazo zilikuja kama tunavyojua ni kwamba Ukristo uliingia hapa Rabai kwanza katika nchi ya Kenya na ukabadilisha e, zile tamaduni za Kirabai ambapo hata kufikia wakati huu mtu hawezi kuingia kanisani na nguo ya kitamaduni ya Kirabai yani ule utamaduni inachukuliwa ni kama dhambi katika hii Rabai na ndio unaona mpaka saa hii rabai kama mahali pa kwanza kwa dini ya Kikristo ilipoingia hapa hakujaweza kupatikana Biblia ya translation ya Kirabai kwa sababu tumeenda katika zile ule utamaduni wa, wa kigeni ambao umetutawala Asante Okay uh, my name is my name is Thomas uh, Chipi. Uh, Samahani. Yes, Leila, translate. Uh, my name is Kavu Kadilo. And uh, <clears throat> my sentiments are that uh, although initially we as a rabbi community had a very strong uh, cultural value system, the, our value system has been uh, largely eroded by modern uh, religion, and that has been a major hindrance to uh, our culture. And uh, he gave an example of uh, the lack of uh, rabbi translations of uh, the Bible and uh, other conventional uh, materials, and uh, that, that is a real challenge to the growth of uh, rabbi culture. He also mentioned that religion demonizes uh, culture and that has made uh, many people to shy away from the culture. Thank you. Tunaanza na mzee hapa wa Kaya. I will hear from a Kaya elder next. Kwa majina ni Baya Nzaka Mangoa. Mimi ninazungumza ile habari ya soyo soyo. Kwa sababu Wazee wa Kirabai zamani kulikuwa ni wazuri sana. Mbishi, mji mmoja unaishi kama mbari ine ama tano na wote hawana matatizo hata kidogo. Wanaishi na ikifika wakati wetu ule wa sikukuu ya Kirabai ni mwaka mpya. Watu wale wote wanachanga pesa, wananunua ngombe na wanakula pamoja. Manake hiyo sasa ndio soyo soyo. Hakuna mtoto ama mkubwa ambaye anabaguliwa. Lakini ilipofika hizi dini nyingi hizi ndizo watu wakawa wanaweka uchoyo. Kila mtu anasema hapa sitaki huyu sitaki huyu. Lakini sisi kwa kweli warabai tunajuana vizuri hata tulikuwa mashamba hununui una mwenzako ana matatizo unampatia shamba unamwambia lima hapa mwenzako 
Hii kama hizo mbegu mnazosema nyinyi mwagawanya gawanya na hata huku kwetu ukulima wetu sana ambapo tunaona changazi kiwa kimeingia zaidi ni muhogo na muhogo una staili sana kwa jua na huku kwetu huo muhogo ndio unaendelea sana na mbegu hizo huwa haziuzi hata mgomba wenyewe ulikuwa hauzi lakini dakika hii kwa hizi madini mengi aliyokuja ukienda shambani ukichimba mgomba wa mtu ama ukivunja muhogo wendo kapande washtakiwa ukishtakiwa wapigwa faini ama uwawe kwa kwa wewe ni mwizi kwa hivyo jamii pia madini ndio yanafanya nini yamekuja tukuharibia sisi lakini sio sio tulikuwa tunaendelea vizuri sana Ah my name is uh, Bayan Zaka I'm a Kaya elder and I'd like to talk about soyo soyo as a cultural value and uh, soyo soyo refers to unity or cohesion amongst members of the community Ah uh, naomba tunyamaze tafadhali Tunyamaze tafadhali kila mtu atapata nafasi So so your soil refers to unity or uh, cohesion amongst members of the community and Mze Mzaka mentioned that initially the Rabai community lived as uh, clans within homesteads and they would jointly celebrate together as a family uh, they would contribute food cook together and celebrate together but currently that is not uh, the case and he attributes it to modernity that has led to decline in uh, social uh, cohesion he gave an example of uh, uh, the traditional setup where by land would be freely donated to friends and family members to cultivate but currently it has to be leased and uh, paid for and also gave an example of uh, the traditional way of uh, free sharing of uh, seeds but uh, currently for you to get seeds you must be able to buy so there's a lot of uh, modernization that came uh, along with the commercialization and that has uh, resulted to decline in uh, social cohesion aya waje tusikie sauti ya mama sorry can we allow tammy to translate please just one moment okay yes yeah, uh, we're good with we're following along Thanks. Wonderful. Keep, sorry. Leila, you can go ahead. They've already they've already translated. Thank you. Sorry about that. Kwa majina naitwa Mabet Kasim. Mimi nauliza. Mila zetu sisi, kwa mila zetu sisi, wamejikenda tulikuwa sote tuna kwa pamoja. Ukiolewa mnakula boma moja. Wavulana wanakula na babu yao na wasichana wanakula na nyanya yao siji huko kwenu mila hizi ziko ama haziko uh, Margaret uh, my name is Margaret uh, Kasim tafadhali ni tunyamaze uh, so uh, my name is Margaret Kasim I'd like to make a, a contribution that uh, in the traditional uh, setup we have we had a value system whereby the girls would eat with their grandmothers and the boys would eat together with their grandfathers and that was uh, like an avenue for transmission of uh, traditional knowledge systems so my question to you is that do you have such systems which we locally refer to as rome in our rabai setup So I, I I think they will answer later. Kwa majina naitwa Said Ndirekombo. Sorry I Kwa majina naitwa Said Ndirekombo Tunafurahia sana mambo zetu za mila. Ninazungumza juu ya Mwenga. Mwenga sisi kama Warabai tumeletwa pamoja na mila yetu ya kirabai kupitia misitu tukiwa tunaenda kusafisha msitu kuna alama ambayo kwamba huyo inafanywa ina, kuna chikokoto ambayo hiyo inazukiwa katika maboma ya mila nani za, za, za kirabai utakuta kila mmoja yuatoka na jembe lake ni mama huyo mzee 
ipanga hiyo mm-hmm. inatuletea umoja kwa kila jamii ya kirabai ili hali hiyo imetufanyisha mpaka warabai wamepata amani hakuna ambaye kwamba akieleziwa mambo ya yakaya anaweza kukiuka hivi tunavyosema umwenga umetuletea uh, hali nyingine nzuri kwa sababu hiyo hiyo kuna hizi mbegu ambazo kwamba zikuwa zinapotea kwa sababu ya kiangazi katika hali yetu ya umoja wa kirabai yule ambaye ako na mbegu ile ya, ya kimila anasaidia mwenzake kwa hivyo katika ile mila ambayo kwamba tunasisitizwa na wazee wetu wakaya ambao kwamba tuko nao na tamaduni zetu zimetusaidia sana na tunafurahia sana kufikia wakati huu so my name is uh, Said Kwambo and I'd like to talk about the Rabai cultural value of umwenga which is uh, togetherness and uh, this value has uh, helped uh, the community so Said talked about umwenga and how it has uh, helped uh, bring togetherness in the community and it is uh, underpinned by the Kaya forest uh, value system and uh, he mentioned one of the ceremonies for cleaning of the kaya forest that is done uh, on an annual basis. That's uh, okay. Chikokoto that uh, normally would bring all members of the community to jointly okay. join hands and uh, undertake cleaning in uh, kaya forest. So this uh, has enhanced togetherness in the community for generations, although to some extent it's beginning to decline. Then uh, he also talked about uh, the value of togetherness in uh, helping in free sharing of uh, land seeds, which has uh, ensured that farmers freely uh, share the seed varieties that they do not have and has helped in uh, maintaining the agrobiodiversity and the traditional food systems of the Rabai community. So can I just ask you something Leila is yes. is any does anybody is anybody able to explain the Muzini concept because they would love to hear about that because they have the Ailu concept do you have yeah. something similar Yes we do Nani ataelezea Muzini Lennox alikuwa na yake anataka kusema nadhani itakuwa bora zaidi kitoka kwa mzee Omari utaeleze Okay so Lennox alafu Omari Ah uh, Lennox uh, had the mic so he'll give his contribution then we'll hear about the Muzini from one of the Kaya elders Thank you Ah uh, Asante naitwa Lennox ni community researcher mm. Mimi mchango wangu uh, utazingatia nguzo mbili ama tatu ambazo kwa Kiingereza zinaitwa values. Moja yapo itakuwa ni umwenga na pili ni soyo soyo. Kama jamii ya Warabai uh, ni jamii ambayo imefanya kuja katika eneo hili na tumekuwa tukiishi katika maeneo ya msitu ambapo ni sehemu yetu ya kuabudu. Na kwa lugha yetu ya kinyumbani tunaita kaya ambayo inamaanisha nyumbani. Kwa hiyo tumeishi pale mpaka muda baadaye tukatoka tukaja maeneo haya ya mashamba na tukaacha sehemu ile kama takatifu ya kufanya maombi yetu. Na katika kufanya hivyo imeweza kufanyika kwa sababu tuko na mfumo wa usimamizi wa kitamaduni ambao tunaita customary court. Uh, na customary court hii imetengenezwa na wazee wa kaya ambao ndio wanapeana muongozo wa uendeshaji wa serikali hii Rabai. Na vitu uh, kitu kimoja hapo ambacho uh, serikali hii ya Kirabai ambayo imetengenezwa na wazee wa kaya wanatokana na ambari ama clans ambazo ziko katika eneo hili. Na ili wewe ukaweze kuchaguliwa kuwa mzee wa kaya hauwezi kutoka tu ghafla na kuwa mzee wa kaya kwanza uwe ni mtu ambaye una maadili mema katika jamii uwe ni mtu ambaye unaweza kuwaunganisha watu na uwe ni mtu ambaye uh, unawaheshimu wote wadogo kwa paka wakubwa 
uh, kwa sababu jukumu la mzee wakaya mmoja wapo ni kuhakikisha kwamba ameweza kuiongoza jamii katika mstari ya mnaostahili. Sasa katika kufanya hivi uh, jamii ya Warabai wameweza kufanya mambo yao kwa umoja na kufanya mambo yao kwa utaratibu ndio maana katika jamii nyingi ambazo uh, zimeweza kuungana nasi katika eneo hili wamependa utaratibu wetu na vile tunavyofanya shughuli zetu ikiwa uh, moja wapo ya vile vitu vinatupatia riski kila siku ni kilimo na baadhi ya vile vitu tunapanda kama warabai tunapanda mawele tunapanda mtama tunapanda muhogo na kuna zao moja ambalo ndio zao tulilotegemea katika kipato ambao ni mnazi ambaye kwanza inatupatia uh, inatupatia mafuta ya kutumia bado nazi ile ile inatupa, inaweza kutumika kama kiungo katika chakula na uh, mwisho kabisa nikimalizia uh, mnazi huu huu unatupatia uh, vitu vya kusaidia kuziba nyumba zetu can we have uh, some it, translation it, it, sorry lennox it's a very long uh, speech can we have some translation please thank you okay. uh, i think leila summarize yeah so lennox uh, said that he'll talk about uh, cultural values of uh, the rabai community that is umwenga and soyo soyo and he began by elaborating uh, the umwenga concept that it was uh, built based on the kaya system and that kayas were initially traditional homes of the Rabai community before they started uh, conserving them as uh, cultural sites and they moved away to settle in their homesteads. And then uh, he talked about the role of uh, the kaya elders in unifying the community the role of the Kaya customary court in uh, solving disputes amongst members of the community. He emphasized that for you to be a Kaya elder, they are drawn from different clans. So this enhances unity amongst uh, the community. And that uh, the Kaya elders also play a very critical role in uh, conserving agrobiodiversity and maintaining traditional food systems. He mentioned some of the key crops, coconut, uh maize traditional vegetables amongst others so then uh lennox you will talk about soyo soyo briefly i think i will give omar the microphone to speak about muzili okay. then we can proceed with the other contribution from other members. We would also like to hear from the youth. Santeni. Eh, kwa majina naitua Omar Mzebimunga. Eh, Nazungumza kusu msemo ambao naitua Mzini. Eh, mzini, hasa vile tunavyojua ni kwamba ni nyumba, zile nyumba zikiwa pamoja kama mbili tatu eh, kwa Kiswahili wanaita mboma sisi kwa Kirabai tunaita pale ni mzini. Mzini ni nyumba zikiwa pamoja wale wanaoishi pamoja hiyo ndio inaitwa mzini. Sasa kuna mzi wa Bemunga, mzi wa Begarero, mzi wa Mzebaya hiyo ndio mzi. Na wakiwa pamoja eh, wakiwa hawana makosano yote hiyo ndio inaitwa soyo soyo maana wako pa pamoja na kwa hivyo nyumba zote zikiwa pamoja ni kwamba tu huo ndio unaitwa muzi kwa kwa lugha ya kirabai e, kaya hizo ni eneo ambao ni ya ya maombi lakini muzi muzi ni nyumba kuwa pamoja uh, we can't hear you, uh, uh, Leila. Are you going to oh, translate, no, no. please? Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Munga, and I'll talk briefly about the Muzini concept. So, Muzini is a rabbi name uh, that originates from a collection of uh, huts within a homestead. 
So the term Muzini was uh, drafted uh, by the fact that when you have different huts, different uh, houses within a homestead, then they all uh, play different roles that ensures a common uh, balance or the total balance within uh, that homestead. And that is what uh, the value system is uh, anchored on, the balance between the different elements of their lives, the people, the wild, that is the kayas, and also the domesticated. Can I ask what about the sacred? Is Do they have that as well in their Muzini concept? Yeah, I just I mentioned uh, the wild, the domesticated, and then the sacred. Actually, that's the first one. He talked about the ancestors and uh, the their sacred uh, systems. Okay, I think we proceed. Kulengana na hiyo swali ni kwamba zile koma zetu tunaza tunaza koma zizo. Kukala huna jenga vizumba vya vya nyasi. Ichikala nani muganga ambayo iye koma hiyo inkwale na jengeru wa nyumba ambayo ni ya, ya mkanga aga. Sana sana. Uh, so yes, he said that uh, the ancestors are part of uh, them and the ancestors are locally known as a koma and uh, they put a lot of emphasis in uh, remembering these uh, ancestors and ensuring that uh, the areas including this uh, the burial sites are actually revered and that uh, they are conserved ikiwa ni mzee zaidi wa umri huwa inafika siku siku moja inafanywa sherehe alafu ametirwe muda hata ambao tunaita kivalao so we perform different ceremonies to revere and uh, remember and also seek blessings from these ancestors. Okay. Asante. Thank you. Okay, we can hear from the youth here. Okay, kwa majina naitwa Ismail Garero, mimi ni kijana wa Rabai. E, vijana warabai tunaongozwa na wazee na wazee kikwetu tunasema ndo wako na hekma na kulingana na mila zetu boma lolote linaanzishwa na mzee na ukiwa kijana pale kwa boma basi ni lazima ufate zile taratibu zenye zinamuongozwa mzee pia wazee wetu wakaya wanatuongoza kama sisi vijana tuna wakati tunaitwa kule na mwongozo wao kulimia makaya kutengeneza usafi kule kaya kwa sababu kuhifadhi mazingira na kaya ni moja wapo wa mazingira yetu yenye tunayaenzi kama vijana pia kukitokea dharura yote e, tushaona kwamba kuna hii kitu inaitwa kikokoto wa wazee wa kaya wanazunguka nyumba baada ya nyumba na kiambatana na vijana ku pass e, information phone message flani fano kuna kuja disaster flani kuna mchango unatolewa nyumba baada ya nyumba ili kufanywe mtambiko kule so ni vitu venye tuna tunaongozwa na, na wazee wetu na mila na taratibu za sisi wa rabai na tunashukuru e, utulivu huko wa vijana na tunajilinda wenyewe we act kama soldier sisi wenyewe kwa wenyewe uh, my name is uh, Ismail Garero, and uh, as a youth in Rabai, we get a lot of guidance from the Kaya elders. They play an important role in uh, unifying the community and bringing us on board as a youth. Uh, for instance, during the Chikokoto or the Kaya cleaning uh, ceremonies, they are able to bring us on board as uh, the youth, and we are able to learn on how to undertake uh, the ceremony. And they also provide a lot of uh, moral guidance to us as a youth.
Thank you so much. Can we have um, everybody clap for Abai to say thank you? Because we're, we're going to hear about governance now. Estamos eh, apreciando. <laughs> uh, they're clapping. We have just uh, one more. Okay, uh, we, we don't How Can you stay till 6.30, Chemuku? Because we haven't talked about governance yet. Okay. <laughs> Okay, fine. Then we can proceed. Maybe that can be captured later. So we, we proceed to the next uh, agenda, please. Um, Tammy. Um, okay, Christina, back to you. Thank you. We're a bit short of time. I don't know if the Potato Park has any burning questions, but if you don't, is it possible to move on to the presentation about the governance system, please? Yes, we're, we're aware of the time as well. So um, they've Thank agreed you. we can we maybe wait till later. If there's questions, we could combine them uh, at the end. We're Thank ready you. to move on. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, do, you, do you want me to introduce or no? Okay, so Mariano is going to speak about the next topic. Can, can, I, can I just explain? Para, para explicar un segundito, eh, en sí. Rabai están montando eh, la gobernanza colectiva. Quieren hacer una asociación de todas las 10 comunidades, pero no saben bien cómo, cómo hacerlo. Y tienen gobiernos viviendo en los pueblos, en las 10 comunidades. Hay gobiernos. Entonces, eh, no saben cómo eh, asegurar la autonom autonomía eh, en la gobernanza. Y, y tam tampoco, también quieren saber eh, cómo funciona la gobernanza, porque ellos están enfocados en las leyes, pero no tanto en, las, en los valores. Entonces, cómo los valores informan, cómo se toman las decisiones y, y las leyes. Gracias. Leyes constitucionales, hay una campaña. Bueno, hermanos, de Rabai. Let's continue with the experience, uh, the exchange of experiences. We're going to tell you a little bit about how we govern in the Potato Park. We call this park the Potato Park, and, and, and so we have a, a, a kind of a committee uh, that it comes from each community, but it's in a way about that. But our mountains here are also part of our governance structure. We have uh, we have uh, mountains representing men and other women, but the mountains around us are also part of our governance system. Entonces, las comunidades Amaru, Paruparu, Pampalata, each of the communities. The Amaru, Paruparu, Pampayata, Chawaitiri, Sakaka, they form the Potato Park. The presidents of each community form the uh, executive committee. 
el estatuto, el acuerdo. And they have a, an agreement of the statute, which is an intercommunity agreement. Para tomar decisiones. And they use that to make decisions about the potato park. That's where the rules come from. Y ese reglamento y estatuto rige y las comunidades campesinas tienen que ser participantes. And it's a very participatory process. Entonces, las comunidades que no participan tienen sanción. And if a community doesn't participate in the taking of decisions or other activities, there can be sanctions against them. Entonces, la asamblea pero el Consejo de Revolución Autónoma tiene autonomía. Ellos deciden eh, cómo organizar en qué mes se va a hacer su asamblea. And they are, they're independent, they're autonomous, they can decide which uh, dates or when they want to have their meetings. Una comunidad. Uh, can I just ask if Leila is translating? Anaelezea mambo ya usimamizi katika eneo la Potato Park. Na nasema ya kuwa jambo la kwanza, kuna committee ya iyo eneo. Ni kama landscape committee katika area yetu. Alafu hii committee inatoka katika vijiji, tofauti, tofauti, sawa na vile tulikuwa tumejipanga. Alafu kando na hiyo, kuna ile tulitaja intercommunity agreement. Kati ya hizi villages tofauti, wamekuja na kama bailo za makatiba ya kuongoza usimamizi katika eneo lao la Andes. Alafu pia zaidi ya hapo, anasema ya kuwa hii usimamizi ya jamii ina nguvu sana ya kuwa wanajiamulia vile wanataka kuendeleza shughuli zao. Na kama kuna mwanajamii ambaye pingine anaenda kinyume na matako ama muongozo, anachukuliwa hatua kali sana ili aweze ku Kuenda vile mwongozo una, unatoa huo mwongozo. Um, Tami, they're, they're talking about a landscape committee that was in uh, um, the translation that Leila gave. I don't think you mentioned a landscape committee, did you? Could you clarify what it's called? Is it a community association? Yeah, the Association of Communities of the Potato Park. And that's yes. made up of... Of, of each yes, so it's not a landscape committee, um, no, it's a park. Yeah, a park. It's an association of the potato park communities, which is a bit different, slightly different language. Thanks. Okay, uh, I was uh, mentioning that uh, in, in uh, the Rabai case, that is what they called the landscape uh, committee. Christina Nasema, Yakua, Ile kwao haitwi landscape committee inaitwa association ya zile community zenye ziko pale kwa hivyo ni kama usimamizi wa pamoja ndio maana ya association sasa kule haitwi committee ile inaitwa association sawa sawa thanks go ahead tabi nosotros tenemos también we also have hired an administrator for the potato park. And this administrator works directly with this uh, association. And then the, the NGO Andes is supporting association and the administration. Entonces, de cada comunidad tenemos este los técnicos o expertos locales. Each community also has selected uh, two local experts, we call them technicos locales, or local technicians or local experts. Y ellos apoyan una asamblea a convocar um, those uh, local experts are uh, have many roles. Part of it is to call people to meetings, to inform in the local, each village or each community assembly. They can report on work of the potato park. Yeah, we always have to keep our communities informed of what we're doing as a park. También nosotros uh, hacemos reunión martes y viernes. 
and we need at least twice a week uh, this team of local experts. And we plan our activities for the month. Can we can we can we have a pause because uh, uh, Paul Leila yeah. has to translate. Yeah, we'll stop there. I'll uh, do the translation. Uh, anasema ya kuwa katika ile association uh, ya zile communities kuna wale naita community experts toka katika kila eneo wanachakuliwa na kwa pale na wanaweza wanatoa ni kama wanawakilisha zile jamii lakini pia wanatoa ripoti kuhusu sehemu zao alafu jambo lingine kuna ile pia tunaita community assembly kama kuna jambo lolote katika kila kijiji linawasilishwa pale alafu inapelekwa katika ile ya juu ili weze kutatuliwa alafu wanafanya wanapanga mikakati ya kuweza kufanya zile shughuli zao ama activities kila mwezi monthly basis ili katika ile utaratibu waweze kufuatilia zile shughuli zote yani wanapanga kila kitu kwa kila mwezi ili kuongoza shughuli zao za, za kila siku we also have some economic groups, gastronomy, medicine, plants, local guides, and the guardians of the potato, uh, crafts. And a few people, could be four or five from each community, are members of these different groups. Uh, at the end of the year, we do an evaluation. Yeah, and so we do this evaluation part of about 70%. We evaluate the whole community's participation, and 30% is just the specific groups, how they worked. Entonces, gracias a, a la Papa, nos ha unido, nos ha organizado. And we think that the potato is what brought us all together in the potato park. It has uh, brought us together to create new um, a new organization to work together. And and we're very independent, we're autonomous here. We can be um, benefit collectively from the mountains, from our culture, including our clothes or food. And this isn't done with government support, really, it's just us. We're doing this ourselves. Yeah. Thanks, that's my contribution. Ameendelea kusema ya kuwa katika hizi vijiji tofauti kuna zile groups za mapato zile njia za mapato na akatoa mfano ya kuwa kuna kikundi cha kupika chakula cha kitamaduni na kuuzia wale wageni kuna kikundi kina deal na mambo ya madawa ya kitamaduni na za kuleta na wakati hizi fedha zinapatikana kuna asilimia inaenda ya yeah, yeah. akiba ya jamii na kuna ile asilimia sabini yenye inaenda kusaidia zile vikundi alafu pia amesema ya kuwa baada ya kila mwaka wana wanafanya ni kama evaluation ya hizi vikundi za mapato wajue je jamii ilihusishwa kwa kiwango gani mapato ilikuwa ni kiasi gani ndio wajue watagawa ile asilimia 30 wapi kwa kikundi cha kijamii na ile asilimia sabini rudi kusaidia wana wana kikundi sasa ni hivyo ndivyo wanajisimamia na wanasema kuna ile support wanapata kutoka kwa serikali ama government 
ile ni kwa kujisukuma wao wenyewe kama jamii na wamefika umbali huo kwa ajili ya kujisukuma wenyewe thank you Okay. Uh, uh, Lena wanted to add a little bit here on governance. Uh, well, let's talk a bit more about administration and so from January to December, we, we gather all the funds from different activities. So any kind of the sales that the different economic groups make or visitors come and pay, 10% goes to a common fund, a communal fund. And then at the end of the year, we carry out an evaluation. This is by the presidents and other leaders. And we try to do an, um, we try to distribute the funds in an uh, equitable manner. And we check to see how does the whole community work in terms of conservation or potato park activities. They're really good, maybe mediocre, or not very good. And if they don't work all the same, they shouldn't get the same amount of money. If you have four people in your family working at different levels, you don't pay them the same. So we check how they're working, how they're organized, and they get their pay according to this evaluation. So from this fund we collect, we also don't distribute all at the end of the year. We save some for special events. For example, we celebrate National Potato Day, the 30th of May. We save money to celebrate National Potato Day. So we save some funds and then we distribute a lot of it to the communities. Thank you. evaluation community fund. group. Na mapato kwa wale group members inalingana na ile contribution ama ile bidi kila moja ameweka. Watu wanakaa pamoja wanatathmini kila moja amechangia kwa kiwango gani na unapewa mapato kulingana na juhudi zako. Alafu jambo lingine ni kuwa zile vikundi tofauti tofauti lazima ziwe zinachangia katika mambo ya kuhifadhi ile eneo lao licha ya kuwa wanafanya njia mbinu za kupata pesa lakini lazima pia wachangie katika mambo ya conservation na wakamaliza kusema ya kuwa ili kupeana hamasa tosha kuhusu umuhimu wa kuhifadhi zile viazi zao za kitamaduni wako na ile national potato day yani wanasherekea siku ya viazi ili kuhamasisha watu kuhusu umuhimu wa hizo viazi zao za kiasili na ikiwezekana hata wa wanatoa machango katika zile njia zao za mapato na kuwekeza ile kusaidia katika zile uh, ile siku ya kuselebrate na siku hiyo wa wanapeana mbegu tofauti tofauti ya viazi kwa wakazi 
ili kudumisha ile mila ya kupanda viazi um okay. Tommy, that's it for us here yes for unless you have other comments or questions that you want us to add otherwise we're open to listening again to the right okay let's hand it over um to rabbi if anybody has any questions about the governance system but not about farming or other things because we haven't got much time left we have very short time so do you have any questions about what they've just talked about, how they're governed collectively. And when they talk about communities, they mean villages. It might be a bit com confusing, but they have six communities, but they're, they're actually in Rabbi's language, it's villages. <laughs> but please um, ask questions if you would like to, to them about what they've just talked. Thank you. Uh... Cindy. So to see Ulisa Kusu Mambo ya Biashara, Mambo ya Ukulima, Lakini Bile wanasumamia eneo lao. Na wako community sita ama villages. Iyo ni, ni sawa na vile villages kama hapa kwetu. Kwa hivyo nani ako na swali? <laughs> Ngine, mi, Tsui, na nilikuwa na naomba kuuliza kuhusu usimamizi wao hasa wakati investor anapoingia kufanya investment investments nyingi huwa zinaharibu mazingira na hali ya eneo hao usimamizi wao una uko vipi Wa, serikali yao ina waingiza vipi katika kukaribisha investor ama kushirikishwa my name is uh, Tsui and I'd like to ask about how as a governance system you you deal with external investors coming to invest in your landscape considering that most of them undertake activities that are harmful to the environment how are you able to deal with that as a community Sorry, Leila, we missed the first part of that question. Could you please repeat? Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, how do you deal with the external investors coming to, for example, put up industrial establishments or any investment activity within the landscape, considering that most of these investments have negative impacts on the environment? Maybe Christina, we take another two questions, then they can respond to them at once. Hi, Majina Naitua William Gale. Uh, Nikona Swali, New York's Mamizi, Wa Tomato Park or Potato Park. Eh, nikilinganisha na usimami wa community yetu tofauti na Peru na Kenya sisi tuko na sheria za nchi ambazo hata tunapo simamia utamaduni wetu na kujiwekea sheria bado tuko chini ya sheria kuu ya nchi kumaanisha kuna mahakama na kuna vitu vingi lakini meona kulingana na maelezo yao ni kama kwamba wako na uhuru kwamba hawako chini ya katiba ya hiyo inchi. So hiyo kidogo inatupatia tofauti. Tukija kwa masuala ya ardhi, sisi tuko na land ownership. Kule nimeona kwamba ni kama hakuna land ownership. So tunakuwa governed. Eh, nataka kujua iko vipi kulingana na sheria zenu za nchi ya Peru. William Ngale and uh, my question is uh, about the governance system. Uh, from what I understood, your governance system at the Potato Park is semi-autonomous. And in our case, the Kenyan constitution or uh, conventional governance systems overrides the traditional governance systems. 
So have there been instances where the national law overrides your semi-autonomous governance system? Or how are you able to do it in such a flawless uh, manner? And then uh, the second question is about the land ownership. He noted that in Kenya, land is uh, mostly privately owned, while in uh, Peru, it's like there's no individual uh, land uh, ownership. So how is this uh, workable in our scenario? Thank you. Okay, Christina, the... Uh, uh, Tammy can go ahead and uh, yeah. respond to those questions with her team. Yeah, we have we had three questions essentially. Tammy, did you get them? Did you hear the three questions? Uh, we, I think we have the first two. We had another little glitch in the community. So we know one about for investment from outside and the issues with um, national laws overriding traditional governance. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got those two. Why don't you go ahead with, well, the last one was about um, land ownership. Land ownership um, because in Kenya, most land is privately owned. And they understand that that's not the case in the potato park. So is it feasible to set up a, a, a biocultural territory if land is privately owned? That's their question. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You can answer those then. Uh, in there's Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Bueno, este, de afuera, we acá, do have people wanting to invest y, from outside. En el Perú, en caso de nosotros, que es Parque de la Topa, no nos favorece. We are, but no it doesn't favorece. really benefit us. Okay. Porque cuando viene inversión de afuera, any kind of investment valora, that comes from outside viene, usually destroys the environment. It destroys the animals and our crops, our animals. It's not really beneficial for us. The government likes to have investment from outside. But within the park, we don't think it's a good idea. And because we form the potato park, it actually gives us some protection. It gets it's valued as it's as a separate kind of conservation area. And we ourselves oppose those kinds of investment because we respect our mountains and our landscape. And, and just to clarify, the foreign investment that usually would come to an area like this is mining. Mining is a huge threat in this area, but the Potato Park, recognized as an agrobiodiversity zone, gives it some protection against that. And the people organize themselves to protect against those kinds of investments or activity from outside. And Mariana would like to add uh, something can, now. Can 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 uh, uh, the translate first, first right? please? Yeah, I'll uh, translate. Um, alielezea kuhusu ile swali ya investors je wana kabiliana nao vipi na mesema ya kuwa hawarusiwi kabisa katika eneo hilo. Na baada ya wao kuweza kuja pamoja kama jamii na kutengeneza ile mfumo ya kujisimamia kama jamii imewapa ulinzi dhidi ya wale investors na wakisema la ni hivyo na kuna yule ambaye anaruhusiwa kuja hapo kuna wale ambao wamejaribu kuja kufanya zile shughuli kama mining kutoa madini pale lakini wameweza kufurushwa kwa ajili ile eneo imekuwa sasa ni kama eneo la kijamii la kuhifadhi 
mimea za vyakula na pia maeneo yao takatifu zile milima zenye ziko pale. Kwa hivyo jibu ni kuwa hakuna investor ambaye anakuja pale kwa ajili ya ile ulinzi na ulinzi huo umeletwa na ile mfumo wao wa kujisimamia na kuja pamoja kama jamii kwa ajili ya kulinda eneo lao. Yeah, in our, our country, we do have we have a lot of mineral resources, so people want to mine here. The transnational corporations have bad intentions when they come. But sometimes we're not even aware what laws are being made by our Congress, for example, and the kinds of investments they invite to Peru. But it's not beneficial for us. And for us, it's very important. We live from our agriculture and our animals. We, we have our health, we have our hands and feet to work, and we can feed ourselves this way. Yeah, and money might be a dominant force in our economy, but you can eat money. We live from Night of potatoes. And we've worked with the Ministry of Environment and uh, Agriculture to be recognized as an agrobiodiversity zone. This, this is the second in Peru. And uh, that is giving us some protection as well. It means the government will help us protect against mining. And we also do our own defense, not just depending on the government. We will do protests or fight to keep this land as the way it is. And on the 19th of this month, there is going to be a march. And we're protesting the current government. We'll all be participating. And one of the things we're protesting is these transnational corporations taking lands in Peru. And we, we say no to mining in the potato park. Yeah, <laughs> Na pia amesema ya kuwa wameweza kutambulika na wizara ya kilimo kama sehemu ya kuhifadhi mimea za kilimo ama ile tunaita bayo anuai haswa ya kilimo. Sasa ile kidogo pia ime, imeongeza nguvu ya kuhifadhi ile eneo na kuna waribifu. Lakini wakati kuna tishio ya wale investors kuja pale wa wanafanya kama mantamano wanashikana kama association ya kijamii na amesema ya kuwa 19th tarehe 19 mwezi huu watakuwa wanaandamana dhidi ya zile kampuni wanaita multinational kutoka nje dhidi ya wao kuja kunyakuwa sehemu za kijamii wao pengine hawajafanikiwa lakini kuna maeneo yenye wameanza kuingia ingia sasa itakuwa ni maandamano ita itajumuisha watu wote katika hiyo nchi na pia baadhi ya wale supporters wao kwa ajili ya kujaribu kuwafurusha ama kutokubali wale ambao wanakuja kwa ajili ya kuwekeza na kuharibu mazingira yao are you able to do the next question tammy because we're we're a bit short of time the, the question about um, 
the governance system? Is it semi-autonomous? Can you hear me, Tammy? Um, just to explain, um, the Potato Park governance system is fully autonomous. It's not semi-autonomous. There's no government uh, part uh, members of the um, the association. It's only the communities uh, who are not government. Do you want to explain that? Ana sema ya kuwa ile usimamizi wa eneo la potato park. Yani tukisema autonomous ina manisha ya kuwa kwa 100% wanajisimamia community wanyewe. Hakuna usimamizi wa inayote kutoka kwa serikali. E, sasa naturekebisha tu ya kuwa hiyo mfumo ni autonomous. Tukisema semi-autonomous inamanisha kuna wale wa, wa kutoka nje. Lakini hii ni community 100%. So the, the community um, has... Um full ownership of the land except for the resources underneath so that's why they they form the potato park so they are completely 100% autonomous with their own laws except for the resources underneath the land that's why their threat of mining is coming sitiza ya kuwa jamii wanamiliki ile mashamba Na ndiyo mana pia wakona ile uhuru wa kufanya wamuzi wao wenyewe isipokuwa zile rasilmali zenye ziko chini ya mchanga kama madini ama minerals. Na ndiyo mana wale, uh, wale investors wanakuja kutafta zile madini manake wanaona huko ndiyo jamii hawana ile umiliki ya zile resources ziko huko chini ya ardi. Okay, they're back now. So, Tammy, can you hear me? Uh, Ali, uh, can you unmute uh, Kike? He's on mute, please. Yeah. Oh, so we, we do. Um, and uh, we were just going to comment oh. on the land ownership, but I see, I hear you. You it's were crazy. kind of um, moving. I I was just explaining about um, the question about autonomous because they had a question: is the is the governance system semi autonomous? Um, and I think the answer is no. It's fully autonomous. Is that right? We uh, we were just going to comment on the communal land ownership and governance and how that relates to national government, just briefly. Great. So here we have uh, 9,000 240 hectares area. And we have, um, uh, we're the owners basically of this land as a group. Yeah. So we only really have ownership over the, the top layer of the soil. Below that, the government is the, the owner. So there, there are mining um, concessions here, but we have none of them are functioning. And it's in part because we are working together as the potato park so we can resist those activities uh should we just wait for translation uh, leila do you want to translate quickly ah alikuwa na elezea kuhusu mambo ya mfumo wa usimamizi na vile christina alikuwa ametanguliza na kusema ya kuwa ni autonomous na ni jamii inaendesha na huyu anaendelea kusisitiza ya kuwa hiyo ardhi inamilikiwa na jamii isipokuwa zile rasilimali zenye ziko chini ya ardhi alafu wanasema ya kuwa hata kuna wale investors wa kufanya mining walikuwa shapewa rusa na serikali kuja kufanya hiyo mining lakini kwa ajili ya jamii kusimama pamoja na kusema la ndio maana wajaweza kufika pale 
na hiyo eneo lote ni ekari 1240 na 40 na yote wameweza kuhifadhi kwa ajili ya kusimama pamoja na kuwa na sauti moja kama jamii ya Potato Park cuánto va el gobierno y las comunidades que no The governments don't really support us to continue our agriculture. If they promote mining, really, that works against us and will diminish our productivity and threaten our land. Yeah, so we continue to organize as communities to prevent that kind of destruction. Thank you. Wangependelea hiyo mambo ya investment kushinda hata mambo ya kilimo. Ni umoja wao kama jamii ndio imeweza kuwalinda na kuwawezesha kuhifadhi ile eneo. Alafu akasema asante, nimefahau hiyo. So Tammy um, and and Leila and Chimuku and everybody here Uh, we're a bit late now. What would you like to do? Do you want to go home uh, and 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 say goodbye? Or <laughs> um, I think they have some internet problems. Uh, Tammy, are you there? Uh, we're we're still here. I'm just asking what they want to do. Okay. They they don't mind a few more minutes. And... Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're still okay to go, carry a little bit, but we realize it's late in Kenya, so let us know. Okay. So, eh, najua imekuwa usiku na tunaenda mbali. Mungetaka tuendele daka kidoga ama tufunge. Wa musi nuenu. Mufunge. So, they say it is late. We should uh, bring the exercise to our close so that uh, they can have time to get to their homes. Some are coming from far. Oh. So I think, yeah, we close. Okay. okay. So I would like to say uh, a huge thank you um, to the all the um, experts from the Potato Park. And I think they wear their traditional clothing quite often because I always see them wearing the traditional clothing. Eh, kwa hivyo ni kitu anafurahia sana kuona kila mara wakivaa wakiva na kujivunia hizo nguo zao za kitamaduni. And I would like to thank all of you as well because we have uh, learnt very much from your wisdom. And would any of you like to say any final words um, to each other to the Potato Park or to Rabai? Yes, we definitely have uh, we have some people here like to just quickly Uh, ultimas palabras algo the potato park want to say something too yes okay Hello to everyone. So today talking about 
Eh, gracias por vuestra comprensión y que hemos hablado de la historia. Gracias por compartir con nosotros. Para conversar un poco más de la papa y de We'd love to speak again sí. with more time to continue Muchas talking gracias. about the potato park and rabbi. Thank you. Um, Nisa translate kidogo, anasema ya kwa anawashukuru sana kwa muda wenyu, kwa yale ambayo wameza kujifunza kutoka kwenyu, na imekuwa vizuri sana kusikia kutoka kwenyu, na anatumai ya kwa tanyinyi kuna yale mejifunza kutoka kwao, na kama si muda, angependa kuendele kubadilisha na mawazo hata zaidi. Asanteni. Eh... Hey. Kwa niaba ya e, jamii ya Warabai e, sisi tunasema asante kwa sababu tumeweza kupata mafunzo mengi sana. Na sisi kama jamii ni kwamba tunashukuru kwa sababu mwongozo wenu sahii umetupatia challenge. Sasa ni jukumu letu sisi la kuhakikisha kwamba tumeiga mfano wenu na sisi tunawahakikishia kwamba tuna izaktiti na Yale yote ambayo tumeweza kujifunza kutoka kwenu tutahakikisha kwamba sisi nasi pia tumeyawezesha huku kwetu. Lingine ni kwamba tunawashukuru kwa sababu hata nyinyi pia mmeshikwa muda wenu kutuweza kutufunza kile ambacho mko nacho. Kile kizuri chenu ambacho mko nacho mmeweza kutupatia sisi. Si tunashukuru kwa sababu labda hata kama tungenikununua tusingeweza kununua ujuzi ule ambao mko nao. Lakini mmejitolea kwetu sisi kutupatia wa free bila hata kutulipisha tunasema asante hatuna cha kuwalipa bali Mungu atawalipa zaidi kwa hiyo machache Mungu awabariki Can you translate Leila please or Chimuku Okay eh uh, Kadila has just said that uh, the community are very grateful Uh, for the interaction because they have learned a lot and if they have they were to buy this information then that will be very expensive for them they are happy that they were able to get this for free and the peru team took their time commitment to teach them to speak to them so that they can learn from what they are doing and the team here is committed to take some of the lessons into action and try as much as they can to bring these practices home and try to implement them on the ground here so the the community is very happy and uh, if there are more sessions like this uh, they will really welcome them and they look forward to having more and more interactive session like this so that they can continue learning from the leadership that the uh, Peru team is providing thank you very much uh, Tammy did you get that she's going yeah, to translate we oh fantastic yes. thank you very much. so thank you so much uh Voroni to the rabbi asante sana and uh, Alianchu uh, to uh, the Potato Park. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Han aprendido, todos hemos aprendido muchísimo de vosotros otra vez. Y eh, el paisaje es precioso y los trajes también. Muchísimas gracias. Gracias. Gracias, Cristina. Gracias, Tami. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Un saludo muy grande. Oh. Aliancho. Aliancho. Oh. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>